All right, today we're looking at that classic vocal compression combo. It's a fast FET compressor, the 1176, with the LA-2A Opto Compressor. This is a really old classic setup. It's tried and true, it works really good, and it's pretty simple to apply. Today I'm gonna show you how. And on top of that, I'm gonna show you a little bit more of the effects chain that I like to put in after that compression combo that also has to do with controlling dynamics. So let's get on into it. All right, so both of these are from Analog Obsessions, and these are both free versions of the famous 1176 and LA-2A. On the top here, you have Fetish, the 1176, and on the bottom, you have Lala, the LA-2A. And Fetish is modeled after the classic analog FET compressor, that's field effect transistor, and Lala is a classic opto compressor. Now, both of these are program dependent. They're nice and simple, and you drive the signal into them, and then they do their thing. They go to work on the signal, compressing it and clamping down with the threshold. The idea here, and the reason this is so good on vocals, is the 1176 comes first. Because it's such a fast, aggressive compressor bordering on a limiter, the 1176 just catches the peaks of the vocals, and it adds a nice color of its own while it's doing it. It's not a very transparent compressor, but it tends to sound really good on vocals. And then the opto compressor comes next, and optos have really unique release designs. So the LA-2A is really smooth and warm and has a lot of character, but it's not good for spiky transients and lots of dynamics. So that's why this is such a perfect combo. Now, some people do put the opto compressor first. You could try that if you want and give it a shot and see if that works for you. But this is the classic way of doing it is the fast limiter style compressor comes first and then the slow warm compressor comes after. Now on the top in orange is a little bit of a vocal here that we're going to process. I have done a little bit of clip gain automation here, but not a lot. I wanted to leave a healthy amount of dynamics so we can really see how this works. Let's take a listen. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Now right here is a fairly dynamic part still. Yeah, yeah. So you might go to a chorus or a bridge or somewhere where you have a lot of healthy dynamics, some of the loudest sung notes, and that's where you would dial in your 1176. So let's try it on this line right here. Yeah, yeah. All right, so the needle's not moving. We haven't engaged yet. And the attack on the 1176 is really, really fast. So I'm going to leave it where it's at right now. We'll adjust it in a bit if we need to. But I am going to put the release at its fastest setting because we're just trying to grab peaks here. So we just want it to grab the loudest notes and let go. We're going to go ahead and start with a ratio of 8 to 1. Let's crank up the input a little bit, which is driving in the signal until we try to get a good 3-4 dB of gain reduction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, the needle's starting to move there. And I'm going to gauge it a little further and let's get a good, healthy 3 to 4 dB on the loudest notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. All right, we're going to start with that. And that's the idea with the FET compressor coming first, is it should not be active on most of the notes. It should only be compressing and giving you gain reduction on the loudest notes. That's its job here in this version of serial compression. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. And there's nothing on this vocal chain yet. That way you can really hear what they're doing. So let's do the same thing here. Let's dial in a little bit of peak reduction. And that's driving the signal in to effectively engage the threshold. And the harder you drive it, the harder it engages its own ratio. So you don't have control over the ratio or the threshold on this. You just drive it in. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. That's about three more dB again reduction, which is pretty good. I'm going to drive it a little harder. Yeah, yeah. And you can see how smooth those two are already. Now, gain here is basically your output or makeup gain. So I am going to increase that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. All right. 
Yep, they're really easy to dial in. And at this point, we could go back and tweak the attack on the FET compressor if we wanted to. But before I go any harder or further than this, I am gonna work a little bit further down the effects chain and just leave these be for now. But I also wanna point out that this is great in mixing, but this is also used really commonly during tracking. When you're recording, you can do the exact same thing. Now, a lot of people in a recording setup will engage a stronger ratio on the 1176 that really depends on the vocalist and the performance, of course. But this is a great combo for recording and for mixing. But before we move down the effects chain, let's take a look at another example here. If you're looking for James. All right, and now we're going to dial it in till we get some gain reduction just on the loudest notes. And the 1176 is program dependent, so you're not going to see the threshold. You just turn up the input until it starts to compress. If you're looking for James. That note James there at the end is the loudest, and I'd like to see a little gain reduction on that note. If you're looking for James, if you're looking for James. Back it off a little bit. If you're looking for James. That right there, that tiny bit, hopefully is going to do it for us. Oh, no. There we go. Oh, no. It's just taking the edge off of the peak there. Let's go to another peak. Another day. Perfect. Even though this is a super colorful and aggressive compressor, the 1176, it sounds great on vocals. And now we'll follow it up with La La. If you're looking for James, he don't live here anymore. Very nice. Now that's a really smooth compression job so far. We could dial this in more if we need to, and obviously we would do this in the context of the mix, but I am going to add some saturation next and some upwards compression, so I can always come back and dial these settings in harder if I need to. And I have a de on the chain before the serial compression. Some people do it after, but I think that's really case dependent. Sometimes you actually might want both. But now if we turn on a little bit of saturation, this is not an exciter, but sometimes exciters can be really good for this, but this is set to more of the mid to high mid frequencies for the response. And this is a nice gentle saturation. Let's take a listen. If you're looking for James. And that saturation is going to add a little bit of extra compression naturally as well. You can also use a saturator that might give you a little bit of soft clipping. This is a really quiet, intimate song, so I might not want that, but next comes a little bit of upwards compression. Now, you can use OTT for this. You might want to go for something that's a little less colorful, but OTT, this free version, it does actually do a really nice upwards compression if you dial it way back. So down here at the bottom, I have the downwards compression turned off and I have the upwards compression right in the middle, but I have a mix knob here, a wet dry, and this is called depth. So I'm gonna start with it off and just dial in a little bit of upwards compression. If you're looking for James. A little more. If you're looking for James. And I am gonna increase the attack and the ratio, a little hair and a little extra input signal on the 1176. Let's take another listen. If you're looking for James. All right, now bypass the upwards. If you're looking for James. So those quiet notes are really accented by the upwards compression. Let's take a listen again back and forth. Here's bypass. If you're looking for James. Back on, listen to the quiet stuff come up. If you're looking for James. And let's hear it in the mix. If you're looking for James. I think I need to increase the de a little bit, but now let's listen to this section again with all of the plugins turned off and just the clip gain automation, and then we'll turn them all back on. If you're looking for James. If you're looking for James. Now there is one other thing I want to highlight here real quick. Take a listen to the word for. If you're looking for James. Right here. For looking for James. So the first part of that word four has a bassy note that's popping out that the 1176 is not quite catching and grabbing. So let's assume that is the biggest problem. We have our compressors dialed in in a way that we like it, but we just have one, maybe two little spots that are still jumping out and struggling because I don't really care for that and I do want to fix that. One more time. So there's a couple things you could do here. I could trigger in a side chain just for that one little note. 
I could also go into the 1176 and increase the internal side chain filter above that frequency. But a much simpler way to go about this is just to simply adjust the gain automation on that word. And let's see what that does. Can for change. It definitely smooths it out. Can for change. And I can play with this automation to get it a lot more smooth, but it's just a little bit of percussive on the F on four right there that is jumping a little too hard. So instead of clamping down harder with compressors or doing any extra EQ work, just gonna customize it with the gain automation. If you're looking for James. I could definitely keep tweaking with that, but I just wanted to point that out there. And if you haven't caught my last video on clip gain automation called advanced vocal compression, it's a must if you don't know how this works because this clip gain is crucial for getting a smooth vocal compression. The point of all of these increases and decreases is so I don't have to rely on the compressors to smooth everything out. This is smoothing out the signal before it even hits the compressors. So I just wanted to point that out and we'll keep moving. Let's listen to it one more time. If you're looking for James. Yeah, we're off to a really good start there. But that's the process. Clip gain automation, crucial for getting ready to hit the compressors. And then the de which I'm going to dial in a little harder. And then the serial compression, 1176 LA-2A. Follow that up with some saturation, which adds the extra harmonics and gives us a little bit more compression and saturation. And by adding those extra harmonics, you might find yourself needing less of an EQ boost. A lot of times we like to do high air boosts on the vocals from 12K and up. And this may alleviate the need for so much boost by adding that extra harmonic content in there. And then we follow that up with some upwards compression. And the reason we do the upwards compression after the saturation is so the added harmonics are also brought up with the upwards compression. And then you can move on to the rest of your vocal chain. And let's turn our effects sends back on and take another listen. If you're looking for James. And I'm gonna speed up the attack a little more and bring the ratio up. We're at eight to one. I am gonna take it up to nine to one. Added a little more saturation there, and we're going to increase the upwards compression just a little bit. If you're looking for James, if you're looking for James, yeah, very nice. Off to a great start, but that's the method. If you take the time to do the clip gain automation and you pair it with the 1176 and the LA-2A, add some saturation and some upwards compression, that is a great recipe for a vocal, even if it's a really intimate dynamic vocal like this. With one like this, I still want to keep some dynamics and I still want it to sound really natural, but as you can hear, this is off to a really good start. But there you have it. That's the classic vocal compression method. I hope you got a lot out of that. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll catch you on the next one.